Okay. Glad I wasn't taping all that. Good discussion, but I'm glad it's not viral. <laughs> what the heck is K.O. teaching in that class? <laughs> oh, shoot. Let me just say, people, virtual students, if you're watching this, you're missing out. Okay. So. All right, so we're on 27, 27. Okay, yeah, my goal is if we can get through number 33, that'd be great, okay? So definitely 27, 29, 31, we'll see if we can get 33 also. Okay, so they give us f of x equals what? f of x minus 3 over x squared minus 5x plus 4. They're asking for the domain, okay? And really, we don't have to worry about two things. The, things, the domain's going to be all real numbers except for there's two limitations on our domains. When you have a 0 on bottom, or you have a negative inside of a radical, okay? So, I mean, for example, so let's look at the top. Could I plug in, for example, could I plug in 0 for x? No, because no, if I plug in 0 for x, mm -hmm. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and we can't take the square root of negative 3, okay? Say it again. Well, can I plug in 1? Well, I'm asking this, can I plug in, can I plug in, uh, can I plug in negative 5? Oh. No. So let's do this. Let's find out what makes zero on top. What makes zero on top? We could plug in. So it's all tricky. Well, let's say one and one. Two, oh. Well, let's draw one. Put down 2x minus 3 equals zero. And let's solve that. We add 3. 2x is 0 plus 3. Divide 2. X is 1.5. So can I plug in 1.5? Or not? Am I allowed to plug in 1.5? Well, 2 times a buck 50 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Can I take the square root of 0? Or not? Yeah. Sure. Square root of 0 is what? Yeah. 0. Because 0 times 0 is 0. So I can plug in 1.5. Can I plug in numbers bigger or smaller than 1.5? What am I allowed to plug in? Can I plug in 10, for example? All greater or equal to 1.5. Right. 10 is OK, for example. 2 <coughs> times 10 minus 3 is a positive number. Anything smaller than 1.5, you're going to get a negative inside the radical, which is imaginary. So let's put down. X has to be bigger than or equal to 1.5. Okay, now we're not done yet, though, because what haven't we even looked at yet? The bottom. The bottom. Okay, we said there's limitations if we have a, a negative inside of a radical or a zero on bottom. What's going to make the zero, what's going to make zero on bottom? I'm not really sure yet. Any idea what we could do to the bottom, though? Factor, Factor the same. Yeah. X squared is X and X. If we look at our last term, I can make a positive for... Plus plus or minus minus, which is it? Uh, minus minus, because we got to get a negative there. How do you times to four, but add to five? One and five. Times to four. Oh, one and four. Yeah. One and four. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so what would make zero on bottom? Four. Well, that's one. one and five. So can we plug in one or four? No. No, you can't plug in one. And you can't plug in 4 because it makes what where? It's your own bottom. So let's put down x can't be 1 or 4. Okay? Now, if you did this on a test, I would not mark you wrong. But you could actually simplify that. Okay? Think about it for a second, okay? We're saying x has to be bigger than 1.5, but it can't be 1 or 4. Part of that's unnecessary. And again, I'm not going to mark you wrong if you leave it like this. But what part don't I really need? Why? If a number's bigger than 1.5, it's bigger than one. Or, well, and it's what? It's, it can't be 1, because it's not going to be. It's not going to be 1 if it's got to be bigger. This says it has to be bigger than 1.5, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay? It's kind of like saying this. I'm going to give you clues about my age. Okay? I'm older than 20, and I'm older than 30. How many clues did I give you? I give you one clue. What was that? Because if I'm older than 30, I'm already older than 20. I only gave you one clue, okay? So we didn't need this one. Since we already said it's got to be bigger than 1.5. Now, what if I said it had to be bigger than 0.5? Would I need to have the 1 there? Yes, you would, okay? Because 1 is included on that, okay? If you got that, great. If not, don't worry about it, okay? But, I mean, it's kind of like saying this. If I, how many clues did I give you here? I'm older than 40, I'm older than 40, and I'm not 30. How many clues did I give you? One. Really only one. 
Because if I'm older than 40, you already know I'm not 30. Okay, there's no way I'm 30. You don't need to know that information. Okay? 29. Okay, so we have x minus 4 over. This would be an easier one. X minus 2. Okay. So are there any limitations on what I plug in for x on top? What numbers can I subtract 4 from? What numbers can I take 4 away from? Any number. You subtract 4 from any number, okay? Any number you subtract 4 from. Now on bottom, okay, can I plug in whatever I want for x? No. Give me one number I'm not allowed to plug in. Just give me one number I can't. Positive of what? 1. Yeah, I can't, why can't I plug in 1? Give me a negative, okay? So let's find out what makes this 0. What, what makes the bottom 0? 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So now let me ask you this. Can I take the square root of 0? Yes. Yes, we can. So can we plug in 2 on this one? No. No, we can't because it's on bottom. Okay? So x has to be what compared to 2? Greater than. And again, it can't equal 2 because if we plug in 2, you get the square root of zero on bottom. And when we take the square root of zero, it's zero. But you can't have it on the bottom, okay? So your domain is just x has to be bigger than two. Again, I want to make sure you understand, we're not solving these. They're not asking you to solve them. They're saying, what can you plug in? It's, let's do an easier one. If I give you x minus five, what will be the domain? What can I plug in for x? What numbers can I subtract five from? Anything. Anything. I can plug in whatever I want, okay? Now if I give you this, can I plug in whatever I want for x now? Yes. I can plug in whatever I want except for one thing. I can't plug in what? Five. Five. Why? You get zero on bottom. And again, the reason why students wonder why, how come you can't get zero on bottom? It's not a number. If you divide by zero, it's not, if you type in any number divided by zero in a calculator, it says error. It's not a number. Okay? Something divided, even zero divided by zero is not a number. In case you forgot it, I want to make sure you understand. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 10 divided by 5 is 2. You know why? 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 2 is 10. Is 1 divided by 0, 0? No. Tell me why. 0 times what gives you 1? Nothing. There is no answer to that. Okay? That is not a number. Is this a number? Is 0 divided by 1 a number? Sure, it's what? 0. You can have 0 on top. You just can have 0 on bottom. 31. Okay, f of x equals radical x plus 2 plus radical t minus x. Okay. All right, so what makes this 0? Negative 2. Okay. What kind of numbers can I plug in then? I, can, I, can I plug in negative 2 here? Yeah. Yes, you can, because it's not on bottom. It's just radical x plus 2. So what kind of numbers can I plug in? Numbers bigger than negative 2 or smaller than negative 2? It's got to be. Like, for example, can I plug in 5? Yeah, because 5 plus 2 is a positive number. So we're talking about x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 2 for that part. Over here, what makes 0 here? 2. What kind of numbers can I plug in? Numbers that are bigger than 2 or smaller than 2 on this one? For example, can I plug in 10 on this one? No. 2 minus 10 is, is negative or something, okay? So I need to plug in numbers that are what? Less than or equal to. Less than, what happened bigger than? So what's a simpler way of saying it's got to be bigger than negative 2 and it's got to be smaller than positive 2? What do you say? Anything in between. So a nicer one, there's nothing wrong with this. But we could say negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive. The numbers you have to plug in have to be between negative 2 and positive 2. Now, I want to make sure you guys understand this answer. And this, we're done with this question, okay? Why can't I plug in 20? 20 plus 2 is positive. Why can't I plug in 20? Because 20 minus 2 minus 20. 2 minus 20 is negative, okay? Why can't I plug in um, negative 8? 2 minus minus 8 is 2 plus 8, which is positive 10. Negative eight. But negative 8 plus 2 is negative, okay? You got to plug, the only 
Only numbers between negative 2 and positive 2 work for both of them. Okay? 33, last one of the worksheet. Okay, find the domain and range of f and find the intervals when it's increasing or decreasing or it's constant. Okay? All right, so last question. All right, I'm not going to draw this, okay? Just I'm going to say this really slowly, and you got to look at the pictures while I'm saying it, okay? Make sure you're looking at the pictures while I'm saying it. So on 33, the domain. You want domain and range? So domain, okay. So look at it left and right. What's the farthest to the left that it ever got to? Negative on a, 5. Negative 5. And what's the, answer what I ask, don't answer what you think I'm asking, what's the farthest to the right that this, and again, this is one graph in two pieces, one graph, but what's the farthest to the right that it got to? Four. So is it okay to say the domain is everything in between negative five and positive four? No, why? Because it doesn't include negative. There's a gap in there, there's a big gap, okay? So the first piece goes from negative five to what? Negative three. So. Negative 5 is less than x is less than negative 3. Is negative 5 included? Yeah. Yes, why? Is negative 3 included? No. How do you guys know these things? Open, Open dots. Negative 5 is closed, negative 3 is not. Okay? Or from 2 to 4. 2 is less than x is less than 4. Do I include either 2 or 4? Oh, shoot. There's an extra line there. There's not two pieces of this graph. There's three. There's three. Let's there's back three. up. Let's do this. All right. There's still gaps, though. Okay? What's the middle piece go from what to what? Negative one. Negative one to one. Negative one is less than x is less than one. Do I include either negative one or one? Include positive. Include positive one. Or then we went from two to four. Do I include either two or four? Four. Four. Okay, so for the range. All right, the range. Don't look at it left and right. Look at it up and down. Okay. So, what's the lowest it gets to? The lowest it gets to is negative one. Negative what? Negative three. Negative three is the lowest it gets to. Okay, look at the y values. Look at the y values, okay? And what happens when it's at negative three? Does it go up or does it go down? Stays the same. So the domain is y equals negative 3 or what's the next lowest y value we see on these graphs? Negative 1. Negative 1. Four. And it goes up as high as what? Four. Is there anything going up and down that's left out between no. negative 1 and 4? No. No. So negative 1 is less than y is less than 4. Do we include negative 1? Yes. Yes, it's a closed dot. Do we include 4? Yes. Same reason. Okay, for part B. Now, again, I said this yesterday. I want to say it a little more clearly, okay? The intervals, okay? When you're trying to find the intervals, those are the x values, okay? The x, so what I'm getting at is this. If I give you this graph right here, graph right here, okay? This graph is decreasing from here, to, let's just put that right here, from here to here. So between 0 and 2, it's decreasing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. From 0 to 2, it's going down. What happens once it hits 2? Mm -hmm. From 2 to 4, it's, it's increasing. It's, so when they're asking for the intervals, they're asking for the x values. Just say, look at the, the y values tell you what's happening, okay? The x values tell you where it's happening, okay, or when it's happening. So let's look at this. Um, let's just look at the graph, okay? If we started at negative 5, what happens to the graph at negative 5? Once you trace, it increases, decreases, or stays the same? Decreases, decreases until you get to what? Negative 4. Negative 4. From negative 5 to negative 4. So let's do this. Increase. Let's just wait until I'm all done because we're going to go back and forth. Okay, so from negative 5 to negative 4, it's doing what? Increasing. Increasing or decreasing? Negative 5 is decreasing. 
So negative 5 is less than x is less than negative 4. Okay. Now, do I put equal signs on this? is a little bit tricky. Okay. Do I include negative 5? Is it decreasing at negative 5? I'll use a track analogy. When you're on the starting blocks, are you speeding up or slowing down? You're not doing either one. You're not moving yet. So is it increasing or decreasing at negative 5? Neither. Neither. It hasn't started yet. Okay. Immediately after negative 5, though, it starts decreasing. Okay. Do I include negative 4? At negative 4, is it going up or is it going down? You've got to be careful on this. What's happening? Right at negative 4, it's not going up or down. It's the low point. It's kind of like if you throw a ball up in the air. When the ball reaches its height, its highest point, I mean, the ball, if you throw it straight up in the air, it's traveling away from you. And eventually, it comes back towards you because it comes back down because of gravity. When it reaches the maximum height, is it going towards you or away from you? It stays there. For a blink of an eye, it just sits there, and then it comes back. So we don't include negative 4. So what happens after negative 4? It increases until you get to what? So negative 4 is less than x is less than negative 3. And again, we don't include negative 3 because it stops at that point. Okay. And then the next part of the graph goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Is it increasing or decreasing or being constant from negative 1 to ne positive 1? Staying constant. What? Staying constant. So the constant, negative 1 is less than x is less than positive 1. Okay. Next part of the graph, we jump up or over at 2. What happens at 2 after you, when you leave the, the x value of 2, what happens to the graph? It goes what? It decreases. It decreases. So decreasing from 2, ooh, okay, it's less than x is less than, and it decreases until you get to what x value? Negative 3. What happens once it hits 3? Well, at, th at 3, nothing happens. Very good. What happens right after 3? Increase. Until you get to what? So 3 is less than x is less than 4. Does that make sense or not? I'm very likely not going to ask you one of those on a test. Okay? But I just think it's important that they able to see it. I mean, all they're saying is they want the x values when it's going up and the x values when it's going down and the x values when it's staying the same. Okay. All right. So Monday will be a work day. Tuesday will be a homework quiz.